Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Chemda. Chemda, I'm on the show Am I the Asshole? Not just on the podcast, telling the story of being dad. That's uh, making news worldwide. I'm on a bonus episode. I absolutely love this. this. is legit one of my favorite podcasts. And I know the beginning was Danny going, uh, listen, we had to do this episode. The Bean Dad thing is blowing up. And I needed someone to get not just legitimately angry, but like a little more than the angry that you're supposed to be. Yeah. And I had to book Keith Malley. And I thought that was very, very appropriate. Well, make sure you download it. It's a lot of fun. And I realized after podcasting for 16 years now, I'm only going to do people's bonus shows. What do you think of that? <laughs> it's in the same feed. I don't know what makes it a bonus show. But from now on, I'm only doing bonus shows. It's so free. So I'm going bonus. Just to feel special. Yeah. I'm not doing any regular show. It's a bonus show. I'm going to make people say the regular shows are bonus shows. You're going to be their first bonus show. I think I've earned it. This is a good plan. All right. Today's guest, ladies and gentlemen. Featured on Comedy Central, ESPN, Sirius XM. Oscar Colazos. Hello, Oscar. Oh, uh, what's up, everybody? What's going on? <laughs> now, I, I say Colazos, but I can hear the uh, Spanish in your voice. Do you do Americans a favor and say, just uh, don't even bother with the L's and Y's? Yeah, I saved it 30 years ago when we came to this country. Everybody was like, what? 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 Can I tell you, as 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 a person who also immigrated when they were a kid and has a name like Chemda and understands that the Americans are not going to 100 percent get, you know, what the situation is, I wanted to wag a finger at you. No, you don't say Colazos. And then I was like, maybe shut up. Maybe that's his name. But <laughs> but I imagine your parents are hearing this going. Do you not know our name? Yeah. Meanwhile, Henda doesn't talk to her parents and she's keeping that goofy name. So what well, is the deal? But also, I have to say, my last name is not Khalili. It's Khalili. And I forget that I have been giving Americans a pass at that also. So I'm doing exactly the same thing. Right, right. So, well, if, if we were to get technical, my my real name is Oscar Collazos. Right. So that's how uh, I was born in Colombia. And that's how you would say my name. Um, but when you come here, you don't say Oscar, you say Oscar. I mean, uh, unless you want to get beat up, guessing by your age, you would have, right? Exactly. I came yeah. when I was seven years old. So I was like, you can call me Carlos Gonzalez if you want to. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> but and yeah, the uh, double the double L equals Y is, is kind of a big uh, problem for English speakers. Uh, so we got to a point where, you know, we just decided. And by we, I mean, my brother and I, we were just like Colazos. It's just easier. And it never bothered your parents. Like, you know, a, a name's important. And that, they never cared? No, they didn't because uh, us becoming Americans uh, as kids, maybe quicker than they did as just immigrants who just worked all the time. My brother and I led the way. So okay. we were like, you guys listen to us. OK. All right. Well, what was your me... first English word? Do you remember it? Oh, man. Hi, was Layla. It... No. <laughs> Um, I, you know what? I, I, my first year here was so traumatizing that I blocked all that out of my mind. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh boy. Second like, grade. Th those kids in second grade are mean. What They're kind mean. of mean? What kind of mean? They just, you know, they, they would just make fun of anyone really. But I remember how I, I got, um, I got made fun of for not speaking English, for just dressing different, for, for looking different. Um, so all that stuff that they make movies about, you know, I can identify with all that stuff. Mm. But was there violence at the uh, second grade? There wasn't violence, luckily. Um, no. Um, second, third, fourth, fifth. I think sixth grade, I started to kind of assimilate seventh grade. In high school, I felt more of like a part of the crowd. Never any violence, at least not on my part. I was never like, you say collazo, so you're going to see me, you know? <laughs> but Was it but, more like, oh, let's hear what Oscar has to say if, if i heard that i'd be like tone it down david smith you know let's let's go back to you know let's let's just keep it normal you know i was always just trying to put out fires yeah mm. isn't it amazing how long school is let's say school is 12 years if you had to do your life over again you know everybody thinks they want to but you had to start at the beginning i think you'd kill yourself if you got a 12-year jail sentence you're like is my life over 
<laughs> Definitely, these kids are stupid. They don't realize how long over a decade is. It's a yeah. long time. Sometimes yeah. you get a watch from a place. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, of course, they're going crazy. It's a you lot. got your you got your tenure from just going to school. Right. So uh, we're going to get into uh, all of Oscar's business, of course, whether he likes it or not. I want to mention this, though. Uh, it's breaking news. So, of course, you you're hearing this. You already know about it. The Capitol building is being overrun right now as I speak. I, I don't want to say American civilians. I want to say terrorists. But, of course, uh, it's Republican uh, civilians that are uh, because Trump tweeted out. So here's what's happening in the Capitol building. They're doing this uh, ceremonial bullshit where the vice president, Vice President uh, Pence, uh, goes over again the electoral votes. I don't really understand it. He just verifies it. And it's a big pomp and circumstance day. So Are they Trump's, just verifying that he knows how to count? Like, just quickly on the way out, just right. how many do you see here? Well, Trump is protesting counts. He's protesting numbers. And he tweeted out, this could work out for us if the vice president does the right thing. Now, I don't know what the vice president's supposed to do at this bullshit ceremony. Say, nope, I am not counting Pennsylvania. I'm not counting Georgia the way you guys are playing it. Anyway, Trump says, hey, everybody, come to the uh, Capitol building and, uh, you know, let's uh, let's keep an eye on everything, whatever that can mean. Well, you know what it means. And what it ends up meaning is that people started uh, storming the Capitol, both the Senate and the House sessions. And to the point of uh, gunshots inside, uh, I saw a woman being taken away, bloodied in a stretcher. I've seen um, pictures of uh, guys in suits that I have to assume is uh, Capitol security pointing, uh, blocking with barricades and pointing guns at a door waiting for that to be busted open. Uh, the, you know, the seat in the house, uh, there's a protester there. Again, I'd rather use the word terrorist with his, you know, MAGA flag and his hand in the air. There's also, as you're saying all this, when we see, when we look at footage as literally this stuff is happening where we're being updated just like this, you're seeing more people in front. You're seeing more, quote, citizens. You're seeing, so I don't understand how they're not dispersing people. It's a very important part of the country as a physical place and you can't, disperse people they got in that's so crazy to me yeah where's the riot gear now you know if there's any other city i've been watching anyway where's the you gas know? where's the any kind of you know dispersion that happened you know in other peaceful protests i think well, they were I, putting all their i think they were putting all their chips on the 20th and forgot about today mm. right you now so shots were fired in the capitol building um and, but uh people can't really necessarily make heads or tails of exactly what's going on. But like I said, there have been uh, some pictures already circulated of an inside being taken over. So they canceled, of course, this bullshit. I want to know, and I'm, I'm sorry, but I want to know what yeah. the end game is, right? You go in and who are you shooting at? That's number one. Like Who, who right. are you shooting at? Who are you aiming for? Then once you shoot the one or two or a hundred people, then what? Then you sit on the chair and go like, it's okay, I called it. Like, I don't... What's the end game? You storm in and you go, not that one. Don't count. Stop counting. You run in, you disrupt it. Not to act like it was even thought through to there, but you disrupt it and then they can't make the count. And so uh, he is not. Uh, so Biden is not officially the president elect because this official count can't get done. I love it. I think we should get all of our jobs this way. Like, oh, right. I interviewed for this and you picked this other dude. Let me send like 10 guys down there. See if we can storm the castle. See if you change your mind. At this point, you want me more, right? Because I got people. Cool. It's like, what, what is this behind it? So now there's a curfew in D.C. that'll start at 6 p.m. Eastern time. That uh, is 6 p.m. You're not even like, you better have gotten your dinner ready. Like 6 p.m. is yeah. is a... Like my nephews go to bed later than that. Right. And so you get a couple hours. So we recorded this show and the news came out at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so they're like, all right, you can play in the Capitol for another two, three hours. But then that's <laughs> it for everybody. <laughs> get your pictures. You're in the seat that you pay for, right? <laughs> Enjoy. It is your house. You said it's my house. By the way, they're going to stop doing that. They're going to start stop calling the White House the people's house. 
Like, hey, you guys are confused. You're not allowed in here. But, I, you know, let's say you get arrested today. Can't you show Trump's Twitters as like, look, this is still the person in charge. And he told me to go do this. I feel like that's a good right. defense. And I'm not even kidding. Right. Right. Uh, Oscar, being from uh, Colombia, do you keep do you keep up with Colombian news? What's the political climate over there? And do you see any similarities? Um, I I don't keep up with the Colombian political news. You know, um, I, I I came and all I did was I was like, just let me be American. So I I I put all my effort and energy into knowing what goes on here, what happens here. Uh, and now as an adult, I'm like, oh, man, I, I, I kind of don't know much about over there. So I do know that they have similar issues in terms of, you know, extreme left and extreme right. And they definitely uh, they definitely have pockets uh, of, of of crazy people that would, would do things like this. Um, the division in my family is definitely visible. Uh, half my yeah. family is on one side in Colombia or about Colombian politics and on the other side. And the same thing here. Half my family is like mm. they they love Trump, and we're, and I'm just like, oh my god. And then, my, luckily, luckily, my immediate family um, is you know we're more democratic thinking, and, and we're very happy that uh, Biden won. And uh, but just outside, my uncle and uh, you know some of my cousins, they're there are they you could not get more Trumpier than they are. They go to the rallies. If my right. uncle wasn't. Uh, DC right now, this is like a 73 year old man. He'd be there. Guaranteed. He'd be there. My mom is, already said it. Is he an anti masker? No, he's not. Okay. He's you not. have to say, like, the, does something come up at dinner and you have to say, just stop. You need to stop. Believe That's it or not, there have been so many quarrels at dinner that he, that he was the one that's like, from now on, no more of this topic. So okay. we, we don't even discuss it. Are you there? Are you there with the family because of COVID? They're in Florida. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm in. I'm here in Florida with my family because my life is upside down. <laughs> Just like comedy and all that, right? Yeah, okay. comedy job, New York, all that stuff. I was like, ah, let me get out of here. Let me go did back. You give up, did you give up your apartment? No, I'm. I'm paying two thousand dollars for an empty apartment right now. Are you being serious? Nope. Yep. I mean, oh. it's empty right now. Why? Because I signed a two-year lease. I signed a two-year lease in early February of last year. So yeah. shot myself in the foot on that one. Also, when this whole thing began, remember, uh, the t amazing leadership of this country was like, ah, I'll be gone like in a month. I'll be gone like in two months. So um, nice, not, right? yeah, not that, not that I go his way, but you, you, you know, you're still like, all right, I guess it will be gone. in two Because he was the only voice being heard for the most part. So I was like, oh, this stuff will be gone. And then so nine months later, I'm like, oh, my God, I, I've been dishing out two thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Um, it, for, might, it might magically well, go away because it magically came. <laughs> right. <laughs> if it can magically yeah. come, it can magically go. Maybe somebody will fuck a dog. Yeah, I don't know. Right. Oh, God. So I, I, I used to do Airbnb in my apartment and that took care of my rent for the most part. And I lived, a, you know, super awesome little New York entertainer life and, and all that kind of just stopped. All And I used to work in a restaurant and all that stuff just stopped. So after about eight months, I was like, I'm, I'm going to go home where, where there's love. <laughs> right. And, you uh, might. You might. I don't know if you heard this and it's frustrating to hear. Uh, not only lower your rental price, but get out of the lease if you wanted to. And don't be shy about asking. Don't be embarrassed about asking. Uh, we got out of our lease. All I had to do was a shake a guy's hand, you know, that didn't wear a mask and have COVID. But, you know, men can't talk to each other unless we touch <laughs> skin. Uh, and, and so we, you know, we lost a month and, and got out of it. Yeah, the, the, they, they'd rather have something. So at least shave off a couple hundred bucks. I bet you can. Yeah, when I get, a, when I get back up there next week, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some phone calls. Because if not, I, I really got to do some serious life planning. Now, what makes you go back next week? Um, the fact that I, I was like, all right, halfway through January, I'm going back. I'm going to go look for a job. I'm going to see if I can get a roommate. And if that doesn't work, then I got to make some serious decisions. Right. Holy shit. That's, that's, that's just a, a deadline that I put on myself. And I kind of want to, you know, abide by that. Now, did, did your parents keep your room the way it was since you just recently moved out of their house anyway? 
No. So my parents moved um, to a different building in, within the same complex um, a few years ago. So it, it looks different. Um, so I'm basically in their guest room. How old are you now? I'm 42. And you left your parents' house, what Hamd is alluding to, at age 35. Uh, I left my I left here about 15, 16 years ago to move to New York. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you uh, hmm, what's the word? Explain that to me. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> like 30, 35. And I've I've talked to a few of these uh, kinds of people. Wait, wait so you no, didn't you wait, didn't wait, move wait. out at 35? No, not you? at 35. No. Oh, well, no. at what age? Like 25. Oh, 25. So, so that was a joke. Okay, so I heard a joke and I okay. believed it. Okay. Oh, the the joke. Yes, yes, that. Well, it, you know, it it it. Yes, that's a joke. Well, if I say thirty five, people are you know, it's it's more like oh, I can't believe it. But if I say twenty five, that's usually around the time when people maybe move out. And I America, know, but when you're when you're doing stand up and you're looking like a rock star, uh, getting chicks is part of it. I'm guessing, right? <laughs> Why are you telling them you didn't leave until thirty five? Chicks, dudes, anything they, they don't they don't get turned on. Uh, it's all it's all self deprecation. Yeah. All right, all right. It's a much well, that, better setup. By the way, that changes everything. What's <laughs> 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 <I don't> new? <know. laughs> <laughs> oh God! Uh, let me mention this, uh, then we'll get uh, more into Oscar. Oscar, are you seeing somebody in Florida or seeing anybody in New York? I have a I have a girlfriend in New York City. And that you haven't seen since when? Since the week before Thanksgiving. Okay, so not not too long. Yeah, not too long. Okay, how's that she, go? Uh it's it's definitely odd. I feel like I'm in seventh grade. You know, phone calls every you know every day for a couple of hours. Um, you, you'd have to tell your mom like you know don't come in. <laughs> well, there's you know she's a little younger, so she's uh, more into the FaceTime stuff. So then you know I'll I'll be I'll be doing this, which I still kind of feel weird about. But so then my mom will come to the back, and then my mom will be like this, and then she'll be like this, and I'm in the Just middle like oh, what's other. happening, you know. How old is your girlfriend? She's 29. And do you do you other I, than I love the silence. There was a silence there for like five seconds. I was pulling up the calculator app on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> 42 minus 25 minus 29. So how long have you guys been dating? About a year. So oh my god, it's mostly been in COVID. It's been the most weird relationship ever. <laughs> and weird in terms of how it developed, you know? Uh I, you know, I started pursuing her. She was kind of reluctant. You know, I kind of I kind of put my foot on the gas and she was maybe a little bit more receptive, but still kind of like, ah, you know, uh, I have jobs and I do things. And then a pandemic struck. And from one day to the next, we just spent every day, all day together. Is there a pressure being older and that uh, COVID's putting your job into, you know, uncertainty? Do you give yourself pressure? Like, no. Uh, I just feel like, oh, fuck, look, is she concerned that I don't have it together? No, because she's in the same boat. She works in uh, in theater. Um, so so she knows and she understands. How'd you guys meet? She works at the local coffee shop at my uh, <laughs> in my neighborhood. And ironically enough, I went there one day. I was completely hungover from the night before. And I went to go buy a little sandwich that they sell. And I saw that there was this little open mic thing. So I inquired about it and it was mainly music. It was all music, really. And I was like, hey, can I do comedy? And so she runs it. She was like, yeah, I, I guess. And then I went and did it. And, I, you know, I made people laugh. And then afterwards, she was like, hey, all the comics that come by here suck. And somehow or another, you made everyone laugh, which I've never seen before. And I was like, I've been doing this for 19 years. I know what I'm doing. Uh, that was internally, of course. You loved so, it. <laughs> so then I, I kept going. I kept going. I kept going. And then they invited me to be the headliner for one of their events. And um, and that's when I, I was like, hey, let's hang out. And, uh, you know, she was like, man, hold on a second. And kind of developed. Well, when you say pursued, what does pursuit look like anymore? I, I got three sandwiches in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, pursuit would be like, hey, what are you doing? Let's hang out. Um, when she would say she would be like, oh, hey, I, you know, yeah, maybe uh, I'm, I'm working. I'm, I'm working on this play. I, you know, I got to do the coffee shop thing. My parents are in town going to this party. So there was a lot of, you know, 
we're all busy in New York. Uh, and, and I don't think at, at the beginning she was like, well, let me make time for this guy, you know? Um, would you tip? Overboard, but at the same time, you got to make a point, right? Or well, no? listen, you know what it was really is, uh, yeah, I do tip, you know, in the restaurant business, we tip, I tip everybody. Right. Uh, it's probably because I'm, why well, I'm broke, but, uh, but really, I think, I think what really helped was me going back to her open mic thing. Uh, and being the only comic and being one of the few comics who did go on a regular basis um, with the with the ability to actually make that crowd laugh. Okay. So you guys know. You, um, so no. Funny, yeah. Funny people. They're like, oh, OK. So not not Brad Pitt, but, you know, <laughs> the, the worst that come out. Did you now it's been one year, most of the COVID. Did you guys meet each other's parents or anything like that? Yes. Um, well, I met her parents on a more formal well, that's basis. They had to give you permission to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had to sign a waiver. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I met her parents. I spent a week in Pittsburgh during the, the early part of quarantine. She did meet my parents, but she met them in November when we, we were just kind of hanging out. Um, I had a show at the New York Comedy Festival. My parents happened to be there. Um, I flew them up and she was there. And I did a very, very quick introduction. But it wasn't anything like, mom, dad, this is my girlfriend, because it wasn't even established then. So they have met, but, you know, not Wait, really. Thanksgiving was COVID. What do you mean they just... The, the year before, November of the year before. Oh, so November you've been 19. going out for over a year. Uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of consider, I kind of consider the relationship beginning more when COVID really started, because that's when we, that's when we kind of started hanging out a lot, you know? We were hanging out here and there, dating, I guess could be the word, between September, October, November, December. Did you guys have the COVID talk? Like, hey, how serious are we? Because we got to bubble together. Yeah, she, she, she basically sat me down and she was like, hey, who are you hanging out with? And I was like, wait, no, I'm not that type of guy. She's like, no, COVID. I was like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> and then she, so I was like, yeah, I mean, I live by myself. Like, again, the Airbnb scenario, we kind of shut down. So you know, two bedroom apartment all alone and she lives three blocks away. So I was like, all right, we'll just go back and forth to each other's apartments. Until I moved to Florida. Until I'm out. Peace. <laughs> What's, uh, what were you just saying about Airbnb? I, I did Airbnb for about four years, uh, which is the reason uh, I was able to, you know, pretty much live rent free there. There somebody would rent out a room while you were still there. Uh, yeah, so I have a two bedroom and the way the apartment's laid out, one bedroom's completely on one side of the apartment and, and my quarters are like on the complete opposite end of the apartment. So who was the worst being beer? Oh God. Or Listen, like one of them. About two months ago, I did a Zoom show called Crazy Airbnb Stories, where I spent an hour talking about the three craziest stories. But the last one was the craziest. It's a super long story, but I'll sum it up. This girl showed up to my house. This is the middle of the pandemic. She showed up to my house, full out gauze, bloody in her vaginal area and her in her like ass area, right? Excuse me? Uh, thank you. Exactly. So when what? I open the door, I see this mummy literally just wrapped up in gauze, glazed eyes. She walks right into my room and she's like, oh, I just had surgery. I, I genuinely, I genuinely thought she'd just come from getting an abortion, which it was fine, but I need to know that. Uh, and then her boyfriend, who was there, had a neck tattoo. <laughs> this is crazy. Hold, hold on. Uh, somebody Claws needs... on her vagina and ass? Blood. All in that region. That's not how you get an abortion. <laughs> I know. I, I found out. Eventually, okay. I found out. Uh, You're right. Yeah. But, you know, I opened the door to my Airbnb guest, and that's all I see. And she wouldn't answer any of my questions. I mean, I just had two questions like, like where did you just come from? And she's like, I just had surgery. And then she comes into my room and puts down plastic on the bed. Uh, and then meanwhile, her boyfriend's there. He's like, I see he's got this neck tattoo. He's got red eyes. He's, he won't even look at me. He's pacing back and forth. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? Anyways, two days later, she calls me because I, I left. I was like, the apartment's yours. I'm going to my girlfriend's. But then she well, called that's me. That's what you do for bloody guests? <laughs> I asked her, I said, are you okay? Is everything okay? And then she was like, yeah, I'm fine. I just, you know, I just need to rest. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, my num here's my number. I'm like two blocks away. 
two days later, I get a, I get like 19 Airbnb messages and it was like eight in the morning. So I'm still kind of like groggy. And it was basically like, Hey, don't let that guy back into the apartment. He tried to uh, choke me last night. He said that he was going to hurt me. He said that he was going to steal my car. Don't let him in. Meanwhile, he's banging on the door. Like he's pounding down the door. And I was like, where are you? She's like, I'm getting a massage. She had liposuction. It was a disaster. That's the girl talking about the guy that came in with her. Yes. Okay. She but got she, she got liposuction in the butt. She got liposuction on 135th Street and Frederick Douglass Avenue. She came all the way from uh, Pennsylvania somewhere to go and get it. She must have got a group on. I have no idea. <laughs> Holy shit. My but I found, I found myself I found myself being afraid of her her boyfriend who was basically yeah. kicking down the door. Yeah, of course you were. What? And, and I was like, at that point, I was like, you're in a pandemic. You don't have a job. You're in your underwear. You have a knife. There's a crazy guy pounding on your door. What the hell is your life? I'm going to say the same thing to you. A woman yeah. knocks on the door and follows her is some dude that you're feeling iffy about and you leave with I keys felt, in I their felt, hand. I felt iffy about the whole situation. You felt iffy? Is this, is this you feeling iffy? Yeah, but you know, I, 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 in my mind, I was like, you know, maybe that's, that's their love language. That's how they, <laughs> I have no idea. Who knows? Who knows? Who absolutely knows? So Who am I? just in case I'm, just in case I'm missing a step. So <laughs> she, she put the, she put plastic on the bed, you know, and you're watching, see where it goes. You never know. And then you, you left the building. Uh, I went back into my apartment. My girlfriend was in my room and I was like, Hey, I, you know, I, I think there was, there's some type of, uh, she had some type of surgery. I'm not quite sure. Uh, that's what she's saying she had. Uh, and then I was like, this is crazy. And then I, I was more concerned about the boyfriend. The boyfriend just didn't look right okay. to me, but you know, that's judging a book by its cover. And we live in a, in an age where I, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't what? want people judging me and I don't want to judge this guy. He's got a neck tattoo. So what? I got a bunch of friends that have neck tattoos. But this guy, I don't know, something something told me. <laughs> so then my girlfriend was like, let's just go to my apartment. And I was like, all right, cool. So I spent two days there. And then when I came back, it was she was like, don't let him back in. Uh, he's going to kill us. And I was so like, she, ah. so she started staying there right away. She stayed there for a week. And he never came back after that day. He never came back. She's like, I bought all oh, they were from Scranton, Pennsylvania. She goes, oh, I bought him a, a bus ticket back to Scranton. And then, you know what I did? I'm not even kidding. I immediately got on Google. As soon as she said he's going back to Scranton, I got on Google and I put and I swear to God, I go uh, crime rate in Scranton, PA. <laughs> <laughs> and then I read every terrible statistic about Scranton. And I was like, you don't need to go this route, Oscar. It's totally fine. And then the guy never came back, luckily. But uh this story is this story is so much longer, and that that's just like a two minute version of it. Uh, this is crazy. Hemda's <laughs> like, Hemda's well, like, I feel, I feel like this guy. <laughs> I just feel like we need the medium version. I so you you didn't meet this woman before, right? No, this is just a, a Airbnb booking. You know, and they was, come it in and was it supposed to be a? an interview or was that where you like you'll most likely move in today no no they were just saying you know when when you rent out my room um uh, it's usually you know you she tell booked me it the, for a week she booked it yeah, for a week like a hotel. reservation did she tell you that her boyfriend was coming it just said two okay so it she said did two. it's mostly couples that come it, it's, it's always couples that come so i assumed that this was a couple okay you know? halfway through she tells me, hey, listen, I, I just met that guy. You know, we hung out a couple of times and he said he was going to help me. And then and then so I brought him because I didn't need help. And uh, and then he turned on me. He tried to touch me and uh, and he got, you know, touchy feely and then he got aggressive. Uh, so I kicked him out and I was like, what? At, at what at what point? I didn't understand this. At what point was he pounding on the door? When was that? So they checked in on Wednesday and this was on Saturday morning, Saturday morning. They both left. She went to go get her massage sure. uh, that they do when, when you get lipo. Um, and I guess they had argued the night before until she came and he came back to the apartment trying to get into the apartment. Um, and I was sleeping there that night. So I, mean, I wake up, I, he... I wake up to this guy pounding down the door and I have no idea what's happening. I just think the right. guy lost his key. So I go and 
I almost let him in until I started reading these messages. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? Now, of course, he tried to touch her. I imagine with all that gauze and blood coming out of everywhere, it's very tempting. It's just <laughs> so sexy. I remember That's when I had open heart surgery. Oh, man. I could tell people were looking at me funny. Very yeah. hot. All very hot. Yeah. You know what's funny? She even mentioned that. She was like, I can't even believe that this guy tried to touch me. Meanwhile, like, I'm all jacked up. My whole body's jacked up. And I was like, I... He thinks I'm pretty. I just don't know. So that's that's probably the crazy. That's definitely the craziest of the top three for sure. Well, give me number two. I'm going to start saying I want to know who fault this is. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see how I can sum this one up. Uh, number two is a Colombian couple who messages me that they're traveling from Japan back to Argentina where they live. So a Colombian okay. couple that lives in Argentina is stopping in New York City uh, on the way back from Japan. So the whole week there, they, they're sleeping super late. And I think it was because of jet lag. That, the night before they leave, this was Saturday night, they were supposed to leave on Sunday. They go to Harlem Tavern on 116th Street and they have a couple of drinks. The guy, uh, who by the way is a doctor, and the, and the young lady is a nurse. Okay. Uh, so you know, well-to-do people, uh, at least I think he uh, he ended up getting hammered, um, left Harlem Tavern incoherently and hopped on the subway Okay, and then rode the subway pretty much all night long. So here's this girl waiting for her husband to come back. He doesn't come back. She kind of panics. She does a loop around Harlem Tavern. He's not there. She comes back to my house. Uh, the husband's not there. I'm doing a show somewhere. Uh, so she goes back to Harlem Tavern. She looks around again. He's still not there. She calls the cops. Um, and then the cops come to, by the time I got home, the cops came to my door probably around 3.30 in the morning. So there's two New York City police officers and this girl. And she's like, my husband's gone. I have no idea. We were here. We were there. And then he's gone. And I haven't seen him. And we're supposed to leave tomorrow. And I'm like, whoa. I'm like, I got to work brunch tomorrow. I, I need my sleep, you know? Right. <laughs> and then, so what happened was, um, the cops go back to Harlem Tavern. They check the security system. What? It, the cops? On, I don't mean to sound like <laughs> just jumping on this, but yeah, the sure cops, cops did something. They So the tavern was still open and they were like, hey, it's 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. I know you're about to close. I'm checking your security tapes. It hasn't even been 24 hours. They, yeah, somehow or another, I think, you know, if, if Harlem Tavern closes it, 2 a.m., the, the manager is probably there till 4.30 or 5. Doing yeah, sure, work. knock so, on the door, try it. So they go, they, you know, they get the access to surveillance camera. And, um, and then they come back and they go, come here. And they pulled me off to the side. They let yeah. her and, and, and my then girlfriend who lived with me at the time in, in the room. And they're like, look, man, this is the funniest thing I've ever heard. They go, look, man, she's saying that, you know, he disappeared, but like, in the camera, he just, we see him go to the bathroom and then he leaves. So maybe he has another girlfriend in New York City. Maybe he met somebody else in New York City. Maybe he wants to break up with her. Maybe he wants to divorce her. Like, who knows? So we'll pick this up tomorrow, okay? And I was like, what? Right. Um, and this was also around the time, if you guys remember, remember that teen in the Bronx who got chopped up uh, by the gang with a machete in the bodega? Sure. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, this happened about two years ago. And okay. so that had, that had happened like the weekend before. So in my mind, I'm like, great, you know, now he's getting chopped up. All right. They're going to mm -hmm. throw him in the river. And then all of a sudden I, I got to identify this guy. I got to say you looking up, like what's the crime rate somewhere else. And you looking <laughs> up what happened last week. It's like the <laughs> weirdest crime research I've ever heard of. Like, I, well, you have to consider that. It, this is sprung on me at weird hours of, of the day. So I, I, I wake up to let somebody in. I'm, I'm kind of baffled. It's not like I had time to be like, all right, let me assess the situation. It's basically like wake up, make a judgment. What's happening? Oh, my God. So um, what ended up happening was the guy went down to the, to the train, fell asleep. His phone was off. And he rode the New York City subway pretty much all night long until about 8 a.m., which is when he came back home. And, and then he said that? That's what that's what he said. And look, he was fine. They were happy. And I, I just could not wait right. until these people just left my apartment. Were like, you there for the reunion? 
<laughs> I I was not there for the reunion. Um, I was Did actually. Did he have in, to knock on the door? I was actually in the shower getting ready to go to work. Um, like, how how'd you hear the subway story? He just said, "Hey, I got to talk to my chick." But just so you know, I was joking on the subway. You know how we do. Like, how did you hear that? And also, they were done talking by the time you got out of the shower. They were so embarrassed of the whole situation. They just locked themselves in their room. And I also was like, look, it's a Sunday brunch. No one's going to cover my shift. I'm going to get fired. I can't be late listening to your story. So everything was through uh, WhatsApp or, or whatever. Okay. So it was just a, a giant text, you know, conversation. And I was like, is he okay? Did anyone rob him? Because I fell asleep on the subway a long time ago and I was robbed. And then, oh, Oscar, he just fell asleep in a foreign country on the train. <laughs> Until surprisingly 8 a.m. where a lot of people wake up if you slept with them and then maybe you do the walk of shame. Ah. That's, you know, we've all been there. You just kind of go, oh, am I at the end of the train? I swear I'll get off at my stop this time. You go back to sleep. Oopsie doodle. And wow, he must have been super tired because his phone was off for some reason. So you know how you get drunk and you turn off your phone. <laughs> That's so funny. That's just what I do. <laughs> it's so interesting. You couldn't track me in a fucking foreign country because I decided to get drunk and, and turn off my phone. Oh, you. <laughs> it, it was. I can tell this right. I think my chick would be harping, and so good for them. You know. Yeah. It was. I mean, listen. It was a. It was a complete shit show that that entire week. I was that that. Oh, that sweetie, weekend. I'm just so glad you're back. I mean, I called the cops and everything, but you fell asleep. Of course, silly me. Oh my god. Do you want muffins for breakfast, or should we go full on brunch? There, listen, there was no commotion, but I, you know, they checked out later that day. I, I was at work pretty much all day. I'm pretty sure he still has not heard the end of it two years later. That's if they're still together. Do you ever get, like come back home from work and you're like, oh, yeah, my TV is still here. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're, not have, you're not worried. I'm not. And here's why. Um, I don't have I, a TV. I like. <laughs> I take theirs. They have to bring a TV. And you my, my, my millennial go- girlfriend told me TVs are out and computers where it's Every, at. Yeah, everything's on the iPhone now. Um, mm-hmm. No, I uh, I'd like to consider myself a minimalist, so I have very little in my apartment, and that's because my, about six years ago I burned down my my old unit and I lost everything. So ever since then, I've adopted this very minimalistic. Mentality. Oh yeah, I remember I got robbed by my roommate, and I became real rimmel minimalistic real soon just like oh i have nothing i'm a minimalist guys this is great yeah when Uh, everything when everything you own goes up in flames you're like i'm not gonna go buy everything else all over again how did you burn it down i um it was after i had a long form pee and i had to you know clear the air in the bathroom and sometimes you lose grip on those matches no 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 this was uh i had a halogen lamp uh a halogen lamp that was right next to my a sofa that was in my room. So the halogen lamp was on, made contact with the arm part of the chair and that kind of started smoldering. I thought I put it out, I didn't put it out. I go back to sleep in the living room. A few hours later, my apartment's on fire and you, FD, you FDNY you- is literally stampeding through my apartment and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Okay, you thought <laughs> you put out a fire? He's not. He didn't go to school for it, Henda. He's not a fireman. Are you a fireman? No. Did, so did, how would he know? Oh no, fair. Did you turn not off? Fair. The, <laughs> did you turn off the lamp? I unplugged the lamp. I okay. I doused. I mean, there. I you could swim on my floor of how much water I threw on that couch. But lesson learned: when you have a piece of furniture that's on fire most people think it's out but the fibers way 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 in are still burning so the outside might look drenched the inside fibers are still burning and that's what causes furniture fire and that's exactly what happened to me i'm gonna think of you next time we try to light a fucking campfire and we're like it was just goddamn on latch on let's bring a couch light that shit on fire that's crazy (laughs) yeah and you slept through it until the firemen were breaking down your door yeah, so I left my room. I so this is there are a couple other things that I shouldn't have done. Learning lessons. So again, I doused this thing. I thought it was completely out. I opened the window and I put that 
smoke, that part that had burned towards the window. And then I plugged in a fan to get that smoke to get out of my room, not knowing that the inside the was still on. And then eventually all that inside burning led to outside burning. And then I was start, I started to feed it. But I didn't know. That's you know? okay because you're an immigrant and fanning the flames could mean something completely different to people coming outside the country. Hemda <laughs> <laughs> really, she's, she's going in on me. I'm just being very gentle. But, um, but yeah, so I, I, I was like, it was like seven o'clock in the morning and I was like, well, I'm not going to dump this thing out four flights of stairs right now. I'm going to go to the living room and, uh, you know, go back to sleep and wake up at the time that I usually wake up, which is around 10, 11 a.m. Because, you know, I was working a night shift. And uh, I, well, did I wake up? Let me tell you. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> About 40, 40 FDNY dudes go in there. And if there's anyone with internal aggression that's built up, it's FDNY because they destroyed my apartment. How in flames was your apartment when you woke up? Um, just my room. When you just happened to sleep in the living room. And I was in the living room. Railroad apartment. So completely the uh, other side. But this particular apartment was my room, my roommate's room, uh, closet, kitchen, bathroom, living room, right? So my roommate was actually like right next to the fire. And, and he was day, asleep too? He was passed out. What the f- What are you guys drinking? <laughs> <laughs> and he sleep through all that, right? It was, a dis- it was a disaster. Did the mm-hmm. fireman break down the door to wake you guys up? Uh, the firemen were pounding on the on the entry door to my apartment. So I woke up because the couch is pretty much right there. So I woke up and I was like, I thought it was the UPS guy. I was like, this guy really wants to deliver this package. Like, what the hell? Is you know how they here? are. Yeah. They're, they're, oh, ah. do it. Why wouldn't you think it's one of your renters from the past? You know, I would I'd grab the knife again. Again, I just woke up. Literally just woke up. I spend my life sleeping, by the way. So I just woke up. I opened it. The fireman's in my face. He's like, there's a fire. Get out. And let me tell you, all jokes aside, when when the fireman screams in your face to go running, you don't think twice. Did you, you think about your roommate? I or thought, did you just no, think about I nothing. said you don't think twice. Just, you just run. But you did you on your run. way out? Were you like, I have a roommate. Check on him. Nope. Oh! <laughs> Did you have to explain that later? I was I was in a he house. Came, he came out. He came out literally <laughs> 30 seconds later. That's a long time. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah, that's on him. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I, I yes, was on him. In my hometown, I rented a room, but I, I had the whole house. And there were two other people there, the person who owned the house and another tenant or you know, roommate, whatever you want to say. And the guy that owned the place worked a night shift. And didn't hear his alarm a lot of times in the morning. So it's like 9 a.m. or so. And his alarm keeps going off. But uh, he's a sound sleeper. I found out later that the female roommate, the other person, left the house thinking the house was on fire. Came back that afternoon and was like, oh, I thought everything was, uh, I thought something was burning. Like, you didn't wake me. Ah. You didn't wake him. You didn't wake me. You pulled an Oscar and just ran. (laughs) <laughs> couldn't believe it and she's like yeah anyway everyone's alive so who cares fight or flight fight yeah. or flight is that roommate still in your life he is he's my okay. best friend all right all right because <laughs> you made it through a fire not together yeah right. he, yeah <laughs> the back end of that story is a whole different scenario but yeah we we there was a point where we didn't speak for about three or four months but then why you know, well, um well you know we uh, he, he's a comedian as well. And we were doing that was your pop- first mistake. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> where, where were you in my life before I let him into my apartment? Dating so, comedians like an asshole. So um, we learned the lesson together, Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so him and I used to do this, the show called crazy roomies, which, um, uh, which we, we did to the college market, right? It was more of a college market type of uh, show. So we lived together because we would we would go to colleges together and and just do stand up on stage together, kind of like bumping mics. Um, and you needed the, material, and you're calling it roomies, so you gotta, you know. Yeah, and it appeals to the college crowd, and we get bookings. And he's black, and I'm Hispanic, so the colleges love it. So we were getting a lot of bookings, um, but he hadn't he hadn't 
paid me rent. He hadn't paid me his part of the rent in about eight months. What? Yeah. Um, about. What? So eight months goes by. And th- again, this is my best friend. This is technically my business partner. And I'm here. Here I am killing myself with two jobs while he's just chilling. When so, was your first roommate meeting? Like on stage, like, hey, my roommate, <laughs> he's my right. best friend, but he hasn't paid in two months. But anyway, here's something funny about living it, together. It just got, it just got like more tense and more tense and more tense and more tense. So at first it was funny, but then it was like, we would just argue on stage and the, the, the kids would love it because they thought it was, you know, like, oh, these guys are arguing. But we were really like, I was like, hey, look, you haven't paid your rent. Right. And then he'd be like, yeah, well, your cat hair is all over my food, you know? So we'd be, you know, we'd be, you know. Is that the only time you brought it up? Yeah, and then we, afterwards they would go be like, "Great show." No, we <laughs> we brought it up. We brought it up pretty much all the time. Yeah, and the reason we stopped speaking, huh? <laughs> the reason we stopped speaking was because uh, no, he you already thought, told us the reason. What he thought that I set the apartment on fire on purpose to get him out of the apartment. This was, was the like, same roommate. <laughs> so, oh my god! <laughs> Why didn't you start with that? Of course, you tried to let him burn. <laughs> You didn't know he was in the apartment because he hadn't paid for eight months. You just thought he moved out. Wait, what would he do? Let's say you sat him down. You go like, hey, you know, I spotted you for one month. But like the second month is coming up. Did that happen early on or? It happened all the time. But he was always like, oh, man, don't worry. Look, I got this show and it's going to pay me 500 and I'm going to give it right to you. And don't worry. So 500 for you on Friday. And Friday comes around. He's like, man, the show is canceled. Oh, okay, I'm going to show but you next, a picture next, of my ex-husband and you tell me if that's who you're talking about. Okay, you ready? <laughs> like, but next Tuesday, I got this thousand dollar show that's guaranteed to happen. Don't worry, I'll give that thousand to you. And then next Tuesday would come by and be like, man, the promoter only gave me 250. So it was a lot of that. It was a lot of running. Wait, around. you guys are talking now? Yeah, I, we talked it out. You know, I made mistakes. He made mistakes. Our relationship oh. goes way before the fire. So. It only what? it only makes our relationship way more interesting. You're, you're a, I love you, Oscar. You're a fucking puzzle. Okay, <laughs> what were your mistakes? Yes, my mistakes. Mm-hmm. You fucked his best girl. What what is was your mistakes in this relationship? My mistake was was being kind to a friends on a business level. You know, I should have been like, hey, you got to pay rent. If not. We're done. Right. You know, so you, you, know that, if you were you in a court mis- system, you would get life for that. I mean, right. that's just rude. So you did that mistake. Then he did the mistake of never paying you like an asshole. And so you both made mistakes. Right. Yeah. So let's just let's just uh, water under the bridge. Did you ever get your money? I did. OK, I did. You know how I did, too, because remember, I would book these shows for us. But I made sure that the payment was made to me. So then I'd be like, Chris, this show. Yielded us twelve hundred dollars. You're entitled to six hundred. You owe me X amount of money. How much money do you want me to give you out of this? So, because I didn't want to leave him with no cash at all. So he'd be like, if 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 I'm getting why he wanted to leave you with no cash at all. I uh, ah come on. (laughs) Come on. That's you know what you know what it was. Way too nice. Way too nice. Well, were you guys having like you know an affair? Yeah. No. So he'd be like 600, let me let me get 100 and then take 500 and put it towards what I owe you. So we did that several times until he he was able to I, I think at one point he owed me like $6,000. But you know, we paid he paid it off. And he knows you're going to book the shows. That's what's good. He's like, "Hey, business is doing good, right?" Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, and yeah. You're paid. Yeah, I did a lot of I, I I did a lot of the work. Uh super funny guy. So, you know, he definitely he definitely brought up the funny, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but it's worth it. So you, okay. So, and he's he's apologized, and you guys are friends again. Did you apologize to him yeah. for being too nice? For being too nice, yeah. Apologize. You know how you both made mistakes. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely apologized. Uh, what? I, I I've apologized for. <laughs> I've apologized for to him for because I was kind of an asshole to him a couple times. You know what I mean? Same. Where's my money? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So rude. <laughs> All right, well, you guys worked it out, and uh, you're his bitch. Okay. <laughs> Can I talk about Hydrant? Hydrant is a company that you want to know about to start your new year correctly. Make a fresh start. Now is the perfect time to build hydration into your new healthy routines. I'm drinking it right now. Here's what it sounds like. It's like regular stuff. 
you know. Uh, <laughs> Hydrant is a refreshing drink mix powder made with four key electrolytes, sodium, potassium, magnesium, zinc, real fruit juice powder, no artificial sweeteners or synthetic colors, no nonsense, all science. Now we're learning that science is real mm. after all. Mm. So perfect time for this company. That's nice because COVID's made some mistakes and we've made some mistakes and now... <laughs> Right. We're, we're yeah. apologizing to COVID and COVID is yeah. apologizing to us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, we were rude, coughing into our hands instead of our sleeve, not washing <laughs> for 30 seconds. And now uh, millions are dying. Uh, vitamins A, B6, B12, C, and D are in that as long as, long as uh, as well as ginger, turmeric, 100% satisfaction guarantee with what I'm talking about. Try Hydrant today and save up 25% on your first order. What are you waiting for? Come on now. We got a special deal. Get 25% off your first order. Go to drinkhydrant, H-Y-D-R-A-N-T dot com slash K-T-G or enter the promo code K-T-G at checkout. However you're feeling. I do both. That's drinkhydrant.com slash K-T-G. Enter the promo code K-A-T-G for 25% off your first order. One more time, drinkhydrant.com slash K-T-G. Promo code K-T-G, 25%. You save it. Water meets wellness. Okay? Do the new year right. Come on now. You got to get you, that vitamin D. Hello. No, hello. I meant sunlight because we're not going outside. Oh, okay. All right. But also hello. Hello. Uh, did you hear the story about Tanya Roberts? Uh, she was a, a Bond girl. She was in uh, that 70s show. And I noticed nobody's talking about where I knew her from. And I'm feeling like I felt I was crazy for a bit. Porn. She was in so much porn. She was oh. fantastic. Yes. <laughs> and then, 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 that's not mentioned at all. Oh, she was an angel. <laughs> uh, well, they she it was announced. The publicist said that she died a couple of days ago. So everybody's bummed out. And then they go, no, it was premature. She didn't actually die. What? Now she's dead. Well, first of all, OK, first time. Shame on me. You know, fool me once. But. Yeah, it turns out they prematurely said she was dead, but now she's actually, actually is dead. And the reason that mistake happened, the boyfriend is saying, is because it's understood that she was in the hospital. She's going to die. Uh, they don't really say what happened. She collapsed at home after a four mile local hike on December 24th. So a week or more ago. My birthday. And, and so she's in the wow. hospital. Happy birthday, and, Jesus. Yeah. And they could tell that she's going to pass away. Uh, the husband knows, like, this is probably the last time I'm going to see her. Says to his friend, who's her publicist. Oh, yeah, that was the uh, looks like that's the final goodbye. The publicist takes that to mean she died and calls up TMC and says TMZ and says, uh, oh, Tanya Roberts has passed away. But no one's paying you anymore. Right. But did you you, you want to be the guy in the know? Like, why don't you? Why didn't you even mm. say to the boyfriend, hey, I'm going to call TMZ. Oh, I wonder why. Let's think about that for a little while. Okay. Yeah. Oh, because he's a piece of shit. I get he, it. Yeah, he just wants the attention, I guess, right? Uh, let's see. The, the boyfriend received the startling news from the hospital during a live TV interview, bursting into tears on air, having thought the love of his life was already dead. Wait, so he mentioned that then he, he heard said the that's news probably that the last he said that's probably the last time to his friend and PR and her PR agent. That's probably the last time I'll see him. He took it to mean that she's dead. So then he hears, oh, she's dead. OK, now I know that sad was doing an interview about loving her. Then news came in and go, no, sorry to interrupt this interview. Now she's dead. Thoughts. There's OK. How good do you think their communication was if this is what happens on her deathbed? Well, he's, it's kind of like Oscar saying he did things wrong when the roommate was being an asshole. That's that's what the, this boyfriend is saying. Like, it wasn't the guy's fault. Uh, it was miscommunication. No, it's odd. If I told somebody, I think I saw her for the last time. You don't just call the newspaper. You say, hey, should I call the newspaper? Mm -hmm. it's, it's very strange. Also, maybe, again, that's, maybe that's not your first question. Right. Uh, the boyfriend says, I don't want to blame the guy in any way, shape or form. You could a little bit. I don't think they should ask people while they're in their trauma state. You know, like I remember um, 
uh, uh, asking my husband to leave. And then it's like uh, one of my first times that I spoke about it on, I, it was either this show or Keith's show in the VIP package. I was like, yeah, you know, but we're family. He's always going to be family. Once I got my head clear, I was like, what? Fuck it. Who was listening to me say that? <laughs> what? What? Uh, they're family and I don't talk to my parents. <laughs> so, Whatever. <yeah>. No, <laughs> divorce means you're not family anymore. But right. it it was it is very interesting to talk to someone like a little bit after the stuff happens and then going like, yeah, no, I it, couldn't you tell I was already making bad decisions. I'm not going to make a good one the day after this happens. Right. It's like um, making decisions when you just wake up. Right. <laughs> yes. The firefighter was at my door and I was like, your family, come in. The firefighter is at my door. The young lady loses her husband. All this stuff when I was sleeping. Uh, speaking of uh, Holly Weird, you may have heard that it's this is weird that it's announced like it didn't happen yet, but it seems to be very clear in uh, popular circles. Kanye West and Kim Kardashian will get divorced. Oh, mm. no, that's mm. really sad. That's too what? bad. Well, she can't take it. She can't take his crazy behavior. He can't take. He's surprised that the Kardashians want to film everything. That was a shock to him. <laughs> like, what else did she have? What I were you that attracted was, to? I thought for him that's that was part of the appeal. Like I did he too. Should I thought be watched all the time. Right. Yeah. Uh, she's serious about this. Uh, you know, a source. She is serious about taking the bar exam and becoming a lawyer. Okay. Like she's not going to law school. Just she. Oh, you know what? Catch me if you can. Just came up on Netflix. Like, and, I, and, you know, just put it right in front of me. And I watched it again. And if he could do it. She's serious about her prison reform campaign. Meanwhile, Kanye is talking about running for president and saying other crazy shit. And she's just had enough. Meanwhile, Kanye, who became increasingly uncomfortable and irritated by the Kardashians over the top reality star lives. I mean, like if somebody dated me and then didn't like I was into podcasting a little bit. <laughs> he wants nothing to do with them. If you recall, he's what do you call that? What, uh, oh, he called the mom Chris Jung Un in public. You know, you probably can't do that. That might hurt things with the person's daughter. I don't know. Way. It's funny enough that. Oh, I know. enjoyed it. <laughs> I might let it fly. Kanye tweeted in July I've been trying to get a divorce since Kim met with Meek at the Waldorf for prison reform. So, you know, you're I rich think enough. We, you can get a divorce. And yeah, once you tweet out things about getting a divorce, you're probably going to get one. Uh, this would be Kim's third divorce. She pr she previously hired the guy that she just hired now to be her divorce attorney. So mm -hmm. so she has a divorce attorney that she likes. <laughs> just, she's got to call him and be like, "Hey, Bob, I got another gig for you." Yeah, <laughs> guess what? You mother, you're getting another pool, you motherfucker. Anyway, you did great with Chris Humphreys. <laughs> I, I got I don't even play basketball, and I got all this basketball. <laughs> if you could do me a favor and get Kanye a little bit. She, she was good. married three times? Yeah. Hmm. And uh, <laughs> the guy, is he happy? Like, is it, the, you know, her name pops up on his phone. He's like, yes. Right. <laughs> Kim's calling me. I want like people. They, they have to fight for that. Right. Almost like like real estate. Mm. You know, but, oh, man, I hope I get the Kim Kardashian divorce. Absolutely. We've seen yeah, enough movies. To, yeah. I mean, could, could I read Tweets start sending over cookies right away. Did I did I read that uh, Kanye is bipolar? Yes, that's that's got to be. It's tough, but you know, got to be tough. If they're not getting help. What is it? Meanwhile, you know, Kim Kardashian's like, at least I'm one thing, completely fake. Yeah, <laughs> nowhere I'm coming from. Nowhere. <laughs> Being a bipolar celebrity, ugh, you know how everybody's in your business and everybody's judging every every word that comes out of your mouth. And if you're bipolar, you say one crazy thing followed by a nice thing and followed by a crazy thing. And oh God, well, everybody's like, judging everything you're saying, and you happen to be an egomaniac. Yeah, that's a yeah. But also at the end of the day, so fucking what? So what? Yeah, they throw it out into the ether. You could literally block the internet. You know what I mean? Like what? I don't I don't know that Kanye is suffering from celebrity. I think he's suffering from uh, bipolar. And I don't know that we know enough about it or that he's doing enough about it or whatever it is. But yeah, when someone's fed up, you know. Okay. It's got to hurt, though, you know, when you see that Donald Trump 
this half celebrity who's a joke in his hometown of a New York becomes president. And then the love of your life says, no, that's ridiculous. You can't do that. Mm, that's, yeah. that's a little hurtful, you know, Trump can do it, but you can't really. Cause I'm probably, you know, I, I'm one of the greatest musicians of all time. People, people believe that. Yeah. But you never had a show about uh, half celebrities selling hot dogs. So, yeah, I also, I don't know. Something about it is like, if you're, husband is like, I'm going to run for president. I think you kind of always just go, yeah, sure. <laughs> right. I don't know. You think that you can run for president. I am not going to be the one to tell you otherwise, because that's you're already there. You don't just go. I want to run for president. But tell me what you think. Uh, they've been married. They got married in 2014. They have four kids, so almost a kid every year. Wasn't uh, there twins or was that Beyonce? Not twins, daughter North, Northwest. Northwest. Get it? Yeah, Northwest. Yeah. Like she can change that now, right? Like any of these dumb names. <laughs> Listen, Same. I got ridiculed in school just for the name Oscar. Right. Mm -hmm. Imagine Northwest. <laughs> I gotta say though, with with our age, it wasn't a good time for the name Oscar because all that was associated with is the wiener. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Saint, Chicago, Chicago, Chicago West. West. And Psalm, P S A L M. Now imagine you. Not only you know we were saying this the other day. Who? Oh, when Nick Cannon named his new daughter, powerful Queen Cannon. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> like, you got to deal with that. Like you're not doing them a favor. Also, <laughs> is Queen your middle name? Because I'm calling you um, powerful Cannon, and oh, that's just extra right. weird. <laughs> yeah, powerful Cannon. Short. Like there's no way to win with this name. And so I thought, okay, would I, if I, if my parents named me, I am a big douche, is that worth being a multimillionaire when they die? And that's, that's what you got to think. But now Kanye's not going to be in uh, their life and you're stuck with this name. She's rich enough. I know she has money, but I mean, still your name, you were good. Yeah, I guess. I They're guess both, so. they both can, you know, leave each other's money alone and still be very, very wealthy. Okay, so North North will be fine and Chicago will be okay too. Mm. Psalm. <laughs> Psalm's Psalm. Gonna... You got to spell your name every other day. I know what that's like. Psalm. Call me like, Psalm. It rolls off. Like the church thing, you know. Yeah. Now he's going like... by. Yeah, he's going to go by Sal. You know how Oscar does it. <laughs> 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 it's all good. Whatever. <laughs> Why, the fucking grammar police? <laughs> Whatever you want. Who cares? Uh, Oscar, what's the best way to, for people to find you online? See what's doing. Um, I think just by going to Instagram um, mm -hmm. and typing in Colombian comic, all one word, Colombian comic, C-O-L-O-M-B-I-A-N-C-L-C-O-M-I-C, -C -C Colombian comic, all one word. Uh, are you are you ever going to have, what were you going to say? Sorry. No, I just said Colombian comic with two O's. Um. Are you ever going to have uh, more Airbnb beers in your house? Oof, that's that's something I'm debating. Yeah. Um, I think in the you know if if we get back to whatever Life. normal may have been, uh, yes, but right. you know it seems kind of far away. I hear you. All right, how are you holding up during it? How's your mental health? Mental health is great. I go to therapy every um, every week, so. What's your biggest hang up? What do you find yourself repeating? He makes mistakes a lot. Right. <laughs> He's, he, Oscar's the only one with the therapist that goes, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's a reverse goodwill hunting. <laughs> he said it's not your fault. Then. <laughs> um, my biggest hang up? Ah, uh, man, I don't know. I, I think... I think... Uh, I, I tend to focus a lot on on things that definitely marred my memory and my mind when I came to this country. So just like growing up and seeing things that were different, uh, how my mom reacted sometimes, um, all byproducts of just being from a different country in the United States. I, I, that's weird and deep, but yeah. Nick, you're nodding like you understand. What's he saying? 
Oh, I don't, <laughs> just, translate, I mean, please. I am acknowledging that I'm listening. That's all. But oh. I, I would imagine that, um, you know, he because I came here when I was four and I don't remember anything, but maybe that is my trauma. And one day I will unlock it. But um, I think when you have like immigrant parents responding, tell me if I'm wrong, responding as if they're still in their country um, or with the with an, a, a culture that doesn't maybe match the culture that you have to go to school every day with and then sort of transition back into your culture while you're being Americanized and going sort of back to Colombia in your house, the reactions of your family versus the reactions of uh, your peers and your teachers are very different. So there's like the cover up, maybe there is the um, what's covering hate, like you, you're sort of covering up for who you are, um, like yeah, for uh, being different. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so you're kind of code switching, I guess, in a way, but to your parents also, because, you, you know, my parents used to accuse me of being American. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. I was just going to say the same thing. <laughs> my mom said the same thing. Oh, you're so American now. And I'm like, can we can I have a hamburger or not? I know the shish kebab is great. I know that you make right. the best shit. But, you know, then, you know, you things like you invite people over to to eat. Suddenly your family has a barbecue and you realize all of a sudden my barbecues are different than these other people's. Where are the hamburgers? Where are the hot dogs? It doesn't sound like it's big. And there are other like deeper, more emotional responses than, you know, you have different food than other people. But it's that response of, oh, how do I explain this? Or am I going to have to explain this? And then there's big reactions from your parents that come from maybe like even more oppression because all of our parents do come from more oppression. They don't know how much of that to give to you while giving you the American freedom, while calling you an American as a as a put down, but asking you to assimilate because you have to. There's all of that. Am I getting yeah. it right? Yo, you hit the nail on the head. I always tell people, look, I was... Um, I was, I grew up in the United States, but then I was raised in Colombia because I would go to school in America with American kids and then I would come home to a completely different world. So I'd tell people, all right, example, fifth grade. Um, in fifth grade, the topic on a Monday was in living color. Did you watch in living color? So we'd all talk about in living color, uh, which I would like secretly watch in my room. But if you came into my house, like if you turned on any other television or walked into any other room, it was Spanish news, Saudo Gigante, all these other um, Spanish shows. So, yeah. So I would go to school and be like, yeah, of course I watched In Living Color. Well, I did because I snuck it in there, but I, I was being forced to watch other things. So, yeah, there was a cover up. Um, it's more like so when I was 12, you know, that's around when. People start talking about like, oh, I think he's cute. I think she's cute. And that was not allowed because in in our culture, like me saying someone's cute or I'm into someone is very slutty. So I'd be in the backseat of, of, you know, my mom's driving me and a couple of friends. And they're like, oh, my God, did you talk to so-and-so today? And I was like, oh, don't talk in front of my mother about this because my mother had a talk with me afterwards. Are you talking to boys inappropriately? Do you do you think someone's cute? Are you being inappropriate? Why are they asking you about this one dude? And I'm like, I don't I'm just having a 12 year old conversation. <laughs> so it's just that that difference. Right. Well, there you have it. Well, yeah. What's your therapist number? I want to do a quick follow up. <laughs> <laughs> I, go, I go to Columbia University okay. oh. All right. <laughs> to stay on brand. <laughs> did, these, did these guys graduate? Well, because it's cheaper. <laughs> OK, they graduated, right? They're working towards their doctorate. Uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good luck, Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, coaching nice... them. They're coaching right. I'm coaching them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how how are they doing? What? Why are you asking me that? Uh Oscar, They're the very ones nice... telling you that uh your girlfriend's older and it's fine. <laughs> that it, that she's older? It, his girlfriend's older than them, so it's totally cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, man. Good seeing you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Happy New Take Year. Care. Happy New Year.